payments and management accounts that are not older than three months. So in other words, you could say the flip side of it could be that historically you could see that these enterprises based on their, these enterprises based on their annual financial statements, uh, you could see that at some point they were thriving when COVID hit, they went into a slump. And therefore you want to check uh, the variance in terms of, of responsibility or market of rather accountability on, 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 on the part of the, of the entrepreneur. So we would look at that and uh, also look at the, the five-year cash flow projections. You have to explain the, the point on the five-year cash flow projections. The, the point is that on average, uh, when funded, funding is provided for these enterprises, the, the, although we provide for a maximum of 10 years uh, repayment, uh, on average, uh, when people lend money, they or borrow money, they will tend to be able to repay that debt around uh, six to seven years or and perhaps like beyond that. But it would depend, of course, on the model and the kind of, 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 uh, of capital required for, 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 for funding such enterprises. So you would want to see that uh, in a case, for instance, of a new applicant, there's a clear uh, understanding, appreciation of the of the uh, of of the industry that they're getting to, there's a there's a clear understanding of the 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 the, the manner in which they they would be running the establishment, their sense of of the ups and downs of the industry, the strength that supports their own uh, um, account of the of the feasibilities that they would have done that supports their business plan. So to, to support basically the the strength of what they propose in their business plan. So not in the narrative side. The narrative must match the cash flow side. There must be a correlation between the two. And of course, we require, we require, we would want them when necessary to attach the necessary industry certification and uh, where it is applicable for them to provide the facility statements of other funders if they bring core funders into the into the, the scheme. Uh, so, 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 so broadly, that, that's what we'll be looking at. Of course, when it comes to the B certification, uh, it is in line with the amended tourism sector course. Uh, I think the minister also referred partly to that in the opening earlier. The the, the application process we've provided for a dedicated uh, email. So, primarily in this day and age, we will, we will try and and take advantage as much as possible of the online. Um, the uh, facilities that are available. So people would um, uh, use a dedicated email that we've, uh, email address that we've, uh, we've we provided, which is listed there is tourism equity fund at cifa.org.za. This does not limit people only to that. We also have a, a CIFA call center that they can access. The Department of Tourism has a call center itself uh, CIDA is a, 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 a call center that they can access. The CIFA itself has regional offices all over the country. We have regional offices in every province, or call them provincial offices if you so wish. We call them regional offices for our own convenience. Uh, in the major centers across the country, we have regional offices. We have co-locations with CIDA in a number of, uh, of, of, of areas across the country that go beyond the, the nine provinces that we have. We, we, we therefore are open to people hand delivering and hand delivering the applications in case where they cannot be able to to uh, to submit the applications through through the online facilities so we, we, we're trying to make it as much as possible for them to to easily access the submission points so that the applications can be processed accordingly with the speed that they would uh, desire so we also have CIFA professionals that will be there available to review the applications and conduct the vetting, uh, due diligence, and financial viability assessment. We run these uh, approvals through an investment committee or application committee. We have various committees within CIFA that look through these facilities, uh, through these applications, and process them uh, up to the final stage of approval. And as I said earlier, we've got two members of the Department of Tourism that uh, sit in these processes to, to, for them to have sight of, of uh, of, of, of the work that we're doing. We would then also handle the legal contracting and the disbursement once the, the contracts have been signed uh, through our internal teams with the support of our internal teams. Uh, once we've done through, gone through the, the due diligence and uh, 
then the, establish the viability of the, of the proposal or the application. The proposal will then be submitted to a participating bank for co-funding. Let me just spend just two minutes just to, to explain the, 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 the rationale. So basically, CIFA and, and, and the Department of Tourism in the, in the processes and systems that are outlined would do what we would refer to as the, the primary stage of, of uh, processing the application, which would include the primary due diligence, would say we're satisfied with applicant X, that applicant X can be funded. We would then forward the, the, the documentation of the relevant applicant to a commercial bank for the commercial bank to look at it and, uh, um, and, and get comfort that uh, uh, they can fund the, the commercial com I mean, the, the commercial uh, bank component, as I indicated. Like I said, we've leveraged the support of the banks. So they would look on, the commercial, on, the, on that component of the funding on commercial terms. We also have a veto in the arrangement where if we feel unnecessary, unnecessary that the banks have unduly uh, rejected an applicant, that we can take the application for ourselves. And uh, if we're so convinced that it's a strong application, and provide the necessary funding. I won't bore you with the process flow. It is just to explain what has already been explained in the previous slides. So if we could skip that one and we can get to the option one fund capitalization one. Yeah, thank you so much. So we, as I indicated, the fund is going to be run over a period of three years. Um, and in that three years, the Department of Tourism has committed to provide a total of 540 million, which comes out in that four or five uh, million and 135 is cited there. Uh, and the, the utilization of the funds for the Department of Tourism, the four or five in total will be committed towards finding that grant component that I referred to, which goes to a, a maximum of 20 million, whereas the 135 would support the, the senior debt component on concessional rate, as will be the CIFA component, which is the, the 120 million uh, uh, part of the senior debt. And the, the, the so for the funds that we bring funds, as the state between us as players, between tourism and CIFA, it amounts to 660 million. On the back of that, we've leveraged a co-funding from a commercial bank of 594 million rand. That then brings the total of the fund to 1.254 billion. Uh, the funds, as indicated, we would refund them and make sure that they're used duly for the purpose that uh, they've been uh, designed to, to, to fund. So they wouldn't be, uh, used to cross subsidize any operation or used to something else that they're not meant to. Um, if you get to the next one, uh, you're ready there, thank you. Uh, so, so, so over the three years, there will be a, a, an amount of 1.254 billion, 1 billion uh, that, is, that is available. We anticipate that the average deal size will be around uh, 40 million uh, per enterprise. We anticipate that will be able to support the one enterprises. So these are not small transactions, but they're not necessarily, necessarily too large a transaction. Uh, and as, as uh, the DG indicated, it's precisely because of the fact that we're mindful of the fact that the entry and cost of getting into or rather difficulty, the difficulty of entry and cost or combined the, uh, the cost and difficulty of entry, if we want to put it the other way around, into the sector. Uh, does in fact require a, a sizable um, a allocation of funding. The total number of jobs that we anticipate will be able to create is 5,016 uh, 5, jobs. Uh, we anticipate that in that SPL committed commitment, we will find 40% uh, 40 or 40% of the money will be moved uh, committed towards funding uh, women ownership of women owned enterprises, 30% towards the youth owned enterprises and enterprise in rural areas, we, we're hoping to achieve a target of, of planning to achieve a target of, of 40 percent. Uh, I should emphasize, as I indicated earlier, Honorable Kruger, on the platform, can you please mute your mic? And that goes for all other honorable members and who are on the platform, please. It disturbs the person making the presentation. You can continue. Yeah. yeah. Sifa. No, no, thank you, Chair. So, so the last point, just if you look at it, the aesthetic right at the bottom there, in line with what, with what we said, this is meant to be a transformation fund. We want to achieve a, a desirable level of impact. 
we want to make sure that it's sustainable. In our consideration, we therefore set a minimum deal size of 10 million rand. So we will, we will not be entertaining an application for funding of less than 10 million rand precisely because of that purpose. But also mindful of the fact that we are not supposed to be exclusionary. We do it knowing that within the Department of Tourism itself, there are funds that are available to fund sizes of deals that are lower than this. Within CIFA itself, CIFA does in fact fund different ventures. So they could really be possible, it could still be possible that an applicant may have approached CIFA in the past and would have funded them for, for a deal size that is less than 10 million. So understanding that whereas we all agree that there's a generally lack of, there's a general lack of, of, of funding for, for business, especially for small business in the country. We, we believe that for the design of this uh, fund, we have to, to make sure that the deal size of, min, of minimum of 10 million rand is set aside. One of the things that we should in fact highlight is the fact that this is a window within which uh, as the sector is depressed, it could be possible for, my, for us to make forages and make a dent on the on the figures and numbers that the, the, the DG alluded to as far as the, the goal of transforming the, the tourism sector is concerned. Uh, that, that brings me to, to the end of the presentation, Chair. I will, as, we, as you take over the meeting, just reconnect for visibility on my other graduate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Sifa and uh, DG, Mr. Tarake. Honorable members, this is the presentation uh, from both the department and CIFA with regards to our, or the recently launched uh, Tourism Equity Fund. It is designed uh, for transformation of the tourism sector. I will now, honorable members, invite Honorable members with a show of hands to engage on the two presentations. I will also rely on the host to indicate to me uh, members who are showing or who have raised their hands who want to speak on the two presentations. Oh, okay, thanks, thanks, Acting Chair. The, the first hand I, I have there is Honorable Sitole, uh, Honorable uh, Winkler, uh, Honorable Kego, and Honorable Kruger, and Honorable Siwela, and uh, Honorable Jacobs, Honorable Gumbi. Those are the ones that are there, Chair. Okay, Thank there's you. another one that is coming, uh, Honorable Baba Lua Matule Lua. Yes, I think we can take those chair and then uh, in the second round, we take the, the, take the others. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Boltina. I will start with Honorable uh, Ketamabala Sitole, who will be followed by Honor Honorable Winkler, uh, who will be followed by Honorable Kreko and then Honorable Kruger as number one, number two, number three, and number four. Uh, over to you, Honorable Sitole. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Greetings to Minister, Deputy Ministers, the officials from the department and the officials from the civil and the honorable members of, of the department and the small business. Chair, uh, Chair, first of all, I want to thank and appreciate the, the presentation from, from the department. But uh, I have some few questions, Chairperson, that I need some clarification on, on them. The first one is the, is the underperformance indicators. When we check the underperformance indicators, it says, no allocation, uh, it's it, 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 it indicated that they, there is no allocation for disabled people. So now I'm trying to, I'm trying to check why there is no program for, for disabled people on, the, on this uh, performance indicators. And the other one, chairperson, is that one of funding requirement. 
if they say they need 12 months bank statement and the five year cash flow projections, I'm trying to check the hindrances that is happening there for those who, who are newcomers from, from, from the Department of Tourism. What uh, system is there or program is there for them? Because if, if you need five, 12 months and five years, it means you are closing them out of, 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 the, of the sectors and all out of the business. I'm trying to check what, what uh, system do they have as a, as a sector to, to, to help those who are, who are, in, who are making inroad in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the industry. And the other chairperson is that one uh, now to to tourism now uh, equity fund uh, national. It says the majority of tourism enterprises have not met the thirty percent ownership target, as per the tourism triple B E E codes. I, I'm trying to check the chairperson if the statement says this what the department is doing. Because we are talking about transformation here, which is very difficult and which is coming with a very slow pace. So now I'm trying to check what system do they have to speed up this uh, uh, transformation? Because if you don't have a, a system, because the other one says most black entrepreneurs indicate that access to funding has been the main challenge it seems that if it, it says the main challenge for them to to either acquire or equip in the existing businesses it means that there's a lot of things that uh, the department is supposed to to do now because i'm happy for for the minister the opening of for the opening remarks by the minister because it indicates the the mission of the department and the vision of the department but I'm trying to have now to find out the system. What system do we have now as a in, in the department? Because I'm worried, Chairperson, if you if you can even check that five million grant, it, it seems that they are just catering for the smaller in, in, in investments project, which are existing. I'm trying to check the, the, the coming, the, the newcomers. What are they going to do with the newcomers? And the last one, Chairperson, I'm, there is a resolution of, of, of 20 of Transformation Summit of 2017. If you check that resolution, Chairperson, there is nothing that has been implemented. So I'm trying to check, Chairperson, can they actually give us some details of, of the resolution, of, of the implementation side after that uh, summit? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Honorable Winkler. Thank you, Chairperson, and thank you to the presenters. Um, I have a few points I'd like to raise. In terms of trying to encourage growth in ecotourism, um, as well as looking at tourism that factors in climate mitigation and adaptation, are we actually trying to encourage development of the, those sectors in tourism um, by making those criteria um, for applicants to perhaps satisfy or at least a portion of applicants to satisfy so that we are a bit forward thinking I think when it comes to those challenges. Then the second point I'd like to raise is there's a problem with you know oversight and accountability when it comes to large sums of money being administered by government. So we saw that with the COVID relief fund um, and lots of corruption and mismanagement. So to mitigate against these sort of fallbacks, is it not possible to have a database where we as the portfolio committee and the public and applicants are able to monitor and track the number of applicants that come through, those then that, are, um, that do pass the requirements, and then those that are paid sums of money and the amounts that they are actually funded with. I think that allows the process to be very transparent and open and there's a lot of accountability. And we make sure that the money is actually going to people that really need it and that deserve it. Um, I think it's about time that we take the management of finances 
uh, far more seriously because we have a track record where things can go terribly wrong in a very short space of time. Then, as the previous speaker had mentioned, um, there seem to be quite a few very specific requirements like the business plan and the cash flow projections, five years, for instance. Um, that may be a bit of a barrier to entry by some new applicants um, into the sector. So would it not perhaps be wise to also have a sort of tourism youth development program that runs concomitantly to um, giving access to, to young people to enter into the sector? So to have both programs, um, I think that the, they would complement each other very well. Um, and as I said, we have a huge amount of youth unemployment, and I think that we need to give young people opportunity um, to enter the sector, but they're going to need a, need a lot more than just finding opportunities. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so as I said, I think that youth tourism development plan should, you know, um, teach, you know, business, uh, responsible finance management, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and yeah, okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Can I call uh, Honorable Kruger before Honorable Teko? Honorable K Kruger. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you for the presenters. Um, we know the, the CIFA um, presentation very well, but thank you um, for um, the Department of Tourism for enlightening us about this program. Madam Chair. Yes, um, the red tape for small businesses to apply for finance is unbelievable high. Um, people uh, and, and entrepreneurs that apply for, for, for finance, um, most of them give up halfway along the line because of red tape. And um, we have this... Um, you know, it, it happened in CIFA quite quite a lot of time. And we all know um, that business or starting a business, there's a window of opportunity um, where you, um, be, you know, for your business to be successful. And most of the small businesses waiting for government for financial assistance um, most of the time, they miss this opportunity because of this unbelievable amount of red tape. So my question to the Department of, of Tourism is, what are they doing to ease um, up the application for entrepreneurs to have access to this fund? Because that's one of the big problems if you look at the world bank's ease of doing business that's one of the main problems is access to financing and um, you know government is always um, bragging about money available but the minute when an uh, entrepreneur wants to um, get his hand on this um, money to run or, or to 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 extend his business, um, the amount of red tape are just killing business. So I just want to like to know from the DG, um, what are the department doing to reduce this red tape and make it easier um, for, for potential entrepreneurs or potential business owners to have access to this money? Thank you, Mam Chief. Thank you. I now invite the Honorable T.S. Keko. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Am I audible? Yes, Honorable T.S., you are audible. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, let me welcome the, the presentation by both the, the presenters and also thank the Minister on her opening remarks. Uh, Chairperson, we, we're talking tourism here a sector that is the biggest contributor to economic and development, to economic and development in South Africa. Chair, our national tourism sector strategy 2016-2026 expresses itself 
on a transformed and inclusive tourism economy, which I think the, the, the launch of this fund is also an answer to that. The biggest problem, Chairperson, that faces our previously disadvantaged community is ownership and access to finances, which I think this is a positive response to that challenge. As a committee member in the tourism committee, I am interested and welcome the move and initiative of government to set aside this fund to advantage black owned and new entrants. Uh, I, I am also in support of Honorable Sitole's concern because when I, there was a mention of five years on the requirements for one to qualify, I shrivered chair because new entrants are those that we are targeting if we talk transformation in the industry. The ob objectives chair of this fund respond to real challenges, which is equity, special groups, and paying attention to rural tourism and small towns tourism development. My other question chair to the minister is that uh, since there is a court uh, process that is looming, what is it that they are doing as the department? Are they ready enough to defend their decision on the program? Because it is clear, Chair Uba, in the society out there, there are those people who are against the triple BE policy. If now we have adopted an APP, there was no problem when we were adopting the APP. But when we, the department is implementing the APP, we are being challenged, Chair. The other question that I am about to ask, Chair, is the question that relates to the role of the department when there are uh, problems or challenges in the implementation of this program by CEDA when the problems such as delays, disputes, and unintended objectives. What is it that the department is planning to do as means of intervention? You see, Chair, I'm also interested in knowing what the minister is planning uh, in sort of publicizing the problem, program and making South Africans busy, so that, ready, so that our people ready themselves also in terms of having business plans and making applications to CIFA as soon as the agency is ready. I will come next time, Chair, if there is anything that I, 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 I have left out. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable T.S. Kweko. I now invite the Honorable Matulelwa, who will be followed by Honorable Faiz Jacobs, in that order. Honorable Matulelwa. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you are, Honorable Matulelwa. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank you uh, for the presentation by the, the tourism. Uh, my question is, since uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, presentation is highly excluding the the new the new uh, businesses uh, uh, by the, the the experience of five years and more. Uh, which which effort or strategy that is prepared by the department to include new small businesses in this fund? Um, also, we are highly disappointed about the exclusion of the people who live with disability. 
uh, on this regard. Uh, we are very much disappointed about that. I want to just express that, that we are very much disappointed because it's been a long time that we were, uh, it seems like this is a song we're singing about this. We always uh, raise the issue of excluding people living with disability, but this is continuing now, now, and again, now, and again. Then, uh, to according to uh to, to to the part of small businesses you can't uh, you can't create such qualification of five years or more the minimum of five years uh, or more if you you, you, you you are you are helping a uh, the, the if you have fund uh, most of the time the ones that are in need are the ones that are the new ones, also the ones in three years experience and those ones like that, that they are the ones that are, that need a help very much because maybe someone with five years or 10 years will be having something to use if it comes like, a, if you're coming across to a problem that needs funds most, most of the time. And the ones that are vulnerable are the ones that are new. Uh, according to small uh, businesses and, and everything. Then it seems like this is only for, this is only for existing uh, a, a, a sector that is, uh, that is the businesses that are already existing. It doesn't attract also people because now we are living in these difficult times. People should, uh, if the person, I, I, I would make a, a, an example about a, a person that is was working for the tourism sector. Uh, now uh, there are these things of, of COVID and uh, people are losing jobs. So someone can create something from his or her experience from where was uh, working there. So this is not, even attracting the new, the new, the new businesses, because I believe in in these times we will need to have a, a life where we need to live a life of being uh, having our own businesses than working for such businesses. So those people are also we 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 we, we pledge that please uh, Department of Tourism please also uh, take this issue. And please uh, uh, do draw a strategy to, to attract people to, to do their own. Uh, then you, you, you need to you need to take it into consideration that five years is it's it's it's, 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 it's not it's not what we would celebrate on this thing. Five years and up, it's we not we are not going to celebrate it because for small businesses. Is not is not is not fair at all. I thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, Honourable Faiz Jacobs. Thank you, thank you, Chair of the session, and uh, greetings to all my fellow honourable members. Let me start off by just recording our appreciation for the minister and the team. I think it's uh, the gist of this presentation is well received, and uh, equity and transformation is important in the sector. Um, and we are very concerned that there's still a large way to go for us as South Africans to ensure that all of us benefit from, from tourism. It is a job creator, it is an economic uh, um, a development uh, priority, and it must be shared. So, Minister, we support you, and even those that uh, want to challenge you and want to maintain white privileges is, is something that is unacceptable, and we will continue to support you. I think we must make an appeal to all South African, all tourist operators that transformation and equity and inclusive growth is good business sense and make business sense for all of us. But those that want to still cling on to white privilege, we must be able to um, expose them for what they are. Yeah, in the Cape and the Western Cape and Cape Town in particular, tourism is booming, but black people by and large have been excluded from ownership and management of tourism. In the city of Cape Town, um, the residents of Bukap, where they stay, 
every day tourist buses come into the area. But our, our people from Bukup or like um, animals in the zoo, everybody takes photos of them and their heritage and the slave history and the heritage of the Muslim community and in, in, in general of the community. But they don't get to be active participants. They're not tour operators. They're not owners of tour, tourism in our area. And we can say that across the across the Cape, um, our people in Mitchell's Plain, in Langa, um, in Swellendam, in wherever, there's lots of tourism happening, but our people are still largely being marginalized. So we welcome this initiative. I think we, we want to ensure that uh, Minister and your team, and especially the applications are accessible, inclusive, developmental, and it focuses on all our people. We appreciate the targets that have been set out. So youth, women, rural, uh, disabled must be added. I think that is an omission. We, we want to add that. But these are not just targets to be ticked. These are, these are targeted communities that have been voiceless, have been marginalized. And I agree with the sentiments expressed here that we need to ensure that we help our communities to ensure that the bureaucratic, bureaucratic process don't kick out those very people that we want to target. So Chairperson Martins, I think your team must be developmental in their approach, must be able to help uh, ensure. And I think we must learn from the lessons of last year. It is better to give more people a little bit of money than to give a, give a few people a great sums of money. So I also share the sentiments that there must be transparency in the application and the uh, procurement process. I think we must also incentivize current tour operators. We want local as letter. We want to encourage all of us to travel because we have to travel in South Africa. But then the, trans the, the tourism industry must accept that they must uh, transform. It can't be lily white. It can't be owned only by, by our white counterparts. It must be uh, embracing of all our cultures, embracing of all our diversity. So I think just like we monitor who gets applications, we need to check all the tour operators in South Africa and incentivize those that are willing to create inclusive growth, but also expose those tourist operators that's not prepared to, to create a... Um, a, 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 a good uh, environment. I share the concerns around ecotourism, green tourism, that's the way to go. So we must encourage that. I also share the sentiments of a tourism development uh, mm -hmm. fund where we can actually nurture um, funds. Uh, I think township tourism, village tourism, where we bring people into our areas and even struggle tourism or even heritage tourism or even all of those things must be encouraged because if I want to go into a town, I also want to experience the people, the culture, and the heritage of our, of our proud nation. And I think that must be written. And so all in all, I think um, it's a good initiative. We will support it. We must ensure transformation can happen. And we must convince or coerce those that don't want transformation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Kais uh, Jacobs. I will now invite Honorable Gumbi will be followed by Honorable Siwela. Uh, can, can, can all those that are in the platform who are not speaking kindly mute uh, their gadgets? Can you just, Honorable Members, check if your gadgets are not muted so that um, we do not disturb uh, the other speakers? Honorable Sanganani Gumbi, the platform is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honourable Chairperson. Um, I've just got three uh, questions. Um, so, well, the one, the one first is not so much of a question because it's in agreement with Honourable Kruger, who spoke about um, the idea of red tape and how do we, I mean, obviously make how do we remove all that red tape for all the small business so that ultimately it is actually easier for them to access um, funds and assistance to be able to grow and be part of, you know, a growing economy um, when we can get that economy growing. And I mean, this touches on some aspects that we've spoken about in the Tourism Portfolio Committee. So for instance, um, and I'm gonna just use a simple example where there's agreements across all political parties. Um, the, idea of the idea of making grading free of charge, 
Um, that is something that we pushed for a long time and it still hasn't happened. Um, I mean, we can have the department launching um, a whole bunch of other initiatives, but completely ignoring the portfolio committee's demand that grading actually be free of charge, something that is going to assist all those, all those new businesses that need to come into the sector. And the idea of removing certain um, taxes on businesses to make it easier so that they pay far less so that they can actually be able to compete. The idea of other state departments failing in their functions. Um, so for instance, uh, um, a simple example is poli when police fail around heavy tourism uh, um, areas, well, that means that those small businesses ultimately need to get their own private security, which creates a burden on them. And anyone who runs a small business can't afford that in comparison to a big business. So, so the first thing is about how they're removing that red tape. So I'm in agreement with Honorable Kruger, and I would like the answer to that. Um, the second question is, um, with this fund, how many jobs, uh, and I hope that I didn't in any way miss this, because sometimes in the, when the signal gets shaky, how many jobs um, do we intend to create uh, um, through using uh, this fund? I don't think that there can be obviously any new initiative now that perhaps government takes where they don't have a target around how many jobs we are creating. We ultimately want to make, obviously, uh, as much as you want to share the pie, you need to make also the pie bigger. You want to make sure that there is new jobs that we are adding and contributing to the sector and how many jobs do we intend to create um, from this fund. Um, the third, uh, the third, the third, the third, one, the third comment I would like to make is the fact that I, uh, where I can agree with the Honourable Jacobs from the ANC is that um, um, we should have an openly, and I, I think it was also started by Honourable Winkler, we should have an open and available um, application database, as well as a database of who is awarded this, the, the grants and the loan funding. And if we can have it available, openly available for public scrutiny, whether it's not just the portfolio committee, it's civil society, it's uh, 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 people, are, people are able to buy into seeing this transparent list and be able to have trust, we assist ourselves to being able to root out the kind of crooked connections which are able to sometimes get, get into getting uh, contracts ahead of other people. And I think that that should be a principal agreement um, that is taken uh, across board, uh, even with political parties in this portfolio committee, to say that any kind of fund where there's going to be um, um, a, a, a lot of public funds dispersed, we know what we know the risks that it comes with, and therefore it should be completely publicly available, both the applications as well as uh, um, um, who gets granted so that we are able to see in live real time uh, when that happens and not when you see it five years later or when there's an audit then that things went wrong or when there's an investigation that things went wrong and there's allegations. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Gumbi. I now invite the Honorable Siwela, the Chairperson of Small Business Development Portfolio Committee. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Let me congratulate the Honorable Minister for her well-informed political overview on issues of transformation in, into this sector. Honorable Minister, we are really proud of you. You demonstrate a maturity politically. You, you indicate exactly that you understand the mandate of the society. The issue of transformation, which among other, others include the, the issue of doing away with middlemen, uh, doing away with exclusive, which seeks to, this uh, program seeks to include everyone, is highly appreciated by us as portfolio committees. And also appreciate the initiative made by tourism to include small business or business to, to bring business on board since the issue of uh, small businesses is in our, 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 our department. We really appreciate that uh, it's a challenging issue, issue, but 
we believe through joint venture with tourism will make it. And also uh, uh, applaud the president for the work well done. Uh, Honorable Minister, <coughs> as small business department, as my other colleagues has indicated, have indicated, is the issue of red tape, issue of bureaucratic uh, processes in, in those uh, institutions. For example, <coughs> Uh, municipalities must be in favor of this program on the basis that we are not talking about only old uh, <clears throat> old entrepreneurs, but we are bringing on board new entrepreneurs. We also appreciate the issue of percentage on women, which is 40%, as well as on youth. But let me also emphasize the issue of people with disabilities that are part of us. Although we understand that they are part of, some are part of the youth group, some are part of the women, but to respect them in terms of the, our constitution, which is a constitution which does not discriminate. Let's come up with a particular percentage to indicate that we recognize them, that they are part of us. I fully support what other honorable members has indicated, but, what I want to pose to uh, to to Siva with with the department, I don't have any problem. Rather than to say, please, guys, don't disappoint us, since you made an agreement that the Department of Small Business should must work with you through Siva. Let it be so, and please try to uh, join hands and make sure that this program reaches people who are supposed to be reached. I support those other honorable members who have alluded before me. But I'm appealing that we need to make sure that this program is highly popularized. Uh, on how to do it, honorable minister, it will come from you, but we are ready to support you as the two portfolio committees that we make sure that people who are supposed to be assisted are assisted. The percentage of high, of high unemployment is high now. So, and I appreciate, uh, Honorable Minister, that in your overview, your political overview, you mentioned that this sector has been identified as one sector which has got a potential to, to, for, for economic uh, growth. So, but if we don't zoom into the space properly, it will grow, but it will not benefit the disadvantaged people. So what do we want? We want to make sure that it addresses the three challenges which we are faced with in, in the country. We deal with the system of apartheid and make sure that blacks indeed benefit. That will be highly appreciated. So we need to popularize this uh, program and make sure that it is easily accessible on the issue of application. Uh, yes, I heard uh, the chairperson of CIFA saying that uh, they've got centers, but uh, I'm not sure, and I'm not quite sure whether the relationship with those offices, with our municipalities there, mm -hmm. are there. Because the only uh, uh, institution which must assist us is our municipalities, is our traditional um, authorities. Uh, I'm touching these two institution because newcomers will have to get land and the access of land rely on the two institutions which is the municipality as well as it because we can't keep on talking about those who are there already in the sector because majority of them are white and we need to also to to get in there where those whites are so that we we we, we influence our people to have those what you call those um, launches on the on those areas because <clears throat> the issue of market is also important you can't just say i, I want to start business but uh, when you check the background of the of the of the of the of the place it is not conducive for, for business. So we need to assist them and we need to take that into cognizance. Again, I will be happy if we can be highlighted on the on the current situation, how many up to so far who has now applied. Uh, because I think this is an interesting, uh, is an interesting uh, product. Uh, Honorable Minister, thank you so much.
uh, Honorable Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Thank you so much for having uh, invited us as the Portfolio Committee uh, on Small Business because we have benefited a lot and will be able to answer certain questions, will be able also to assist. Ours will be to support this program, monitor it while doing our oversight properly. But we really welcome the, 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 the presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, honorable members. I, I do see the hands that are raised, but I want to afford the department, the minister and uh, Sifa to respond to the first uh, comments and questions. I had eight honorable members who participated in this round of uh, questions and uh, comments. Uh, I will come back. Uh, to uh, take other hands, but for now, Honorable Mi Minister, can you lead uh, your delegation in responding to the questions? Honorable Chair, Let me come at the end, I will request... Um, Honorable Chair. The, the Honorable, uh, my humble apologies, Honorable uh, Minister. Honorable Sitole. Uh, Honorable Chair, thank you for, sorry for, for the interruption. I'm trying to check because if you check the li the, the list, the the only uh, honourable Mutiaka who's who, who's not now who's supposed to to participate. Uh, I will come to 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 that uh, honourable uh, story, but for now let's let's allow let's allow uh, the department to respond, and then we will have a second set of of of, of hands uh, that uh, will speak on the on the two presentations. Honorable Minister, uh, uh, leading the delegation, uh, Mr. Tulare. Yeah, I will request that um, the, the team by the department and also CIFA responds and then I'll respond and then I'll come back later after they are done. Uh, Mr. Tarage. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Um, thank you, Minister. Thank you to uh, the Honorable Members for the questions. Um, I, I will take some and, and uh, um, DDG will take some and, uh, and, and uh, there, are, there are a number of questions also that uh, CIFA will be able to, to deal with those. Um, the, the first one that I thought perhaps uh, we, we should uh, uh, take note of um, there, is, there is a message about transparency. That's a message that the minister spoke to from the beginning. Um, honorable members would recall that uh, the minister publicized all 4,000 uh, beneficiaries of the Tourism Relief Fund. Um, that, that information went public. Um, and and every everyone could then scrutinize that information. Uh, we we will consider measures to ensure transparency. Uh, what we would then also request is that as we do so, we do not compromise the the business ideas and the business secrets of the people that would have made their applications. Um, and 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 that that is crucial in the sense that. At the end of the day, they, they have a certain right in terms of protection of their own information. And at the end of the day, if you see what we even get compelled to do with regards to tenders, upon the tender process conclusion, there is then a, a publication of who are the people that got which tender, and we do it within a very specified short uh, space amount of time and so on. So we believe that that is something that is crucial that we would still have to, to follow that particular process. The red tape question. Um, one of the things that was done in terms of this specific, uh, uh, this specific program was to avoid overloading requirements. I did hear honorable members uh, alluding to aspects such as uh, uh, green growth and so on. That, that, that's important, but there's a separate program altogether that we do with the idea. 
the, the, the requirements in terms of other things that may not necessarily be at the core of the objectives of the fund, the better in terms of reduction of the red tape. So everybody is able to follow the steps easily and be able then to get to a point where they will be in a position to, to lodge their, their, their applications. Uh, for example, if, if we were to go for, <coughs> excuse me, if we were to go for the, 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 the green aspects of this, they would require a lot of technical expertise that would have to come on board. And so that is added costs and so on. And at the end of the day, some would have to go through certification bodies and so on to be able to have the, the requisite evaluations and all those types of issues and even the cost associated and so on. So those are some of the things that uh, in terms of making sure that it is straightforward, lean, thin, it is going straight to the objective, uh, less and less of the other added objectives. The, the tourism BE codes make a provision for 2% of people with disability. Honorable members would recall this is the same provision for government across board in terms of making sure that we, 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 we don't uh, have a mechanism that excludes people with disability. In the codes, it further says that there is added point, one percentage point, in the event that that 2% is even exceeded. So uh, as, as earlier, the chairperson of CIFA said, uh, th this is largely guided by the, the BE codes, and what we have actually requested for is the 51% uh, from uh, the, the, the ownership and control to be the one that, that, that then exceeds the normal 50% and so on. So, so that, that, that is, that is, that is uh, provided for in the, in the, in the codes. The, 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 maybe I should, I should stop here to, to, to allow for the other colleagues to also come on the other matters uh, for now. Uh, Asma, thank you. Thank you, Tichi, and um, good morning, Minister. Good morning, honorable members. Um, I'm, I'm going to take the question that related to um, uh, what we are doing in terms of um, ecotourism that's being related to adaptation. Um, we're not only focusing in terms of increasing participation uh, by, the, by the TEF, there are other uh, measures that we have come, uh, we have come uh, with in terms of ensuring that um, businesses remain sustainable. We are running a, a green tourism incentive program at the backdrop of uh, increasing participation and uh, ensuring sustainability of businesses. Uh, this fund, uh, the green tourism, ensures water efficiency and uh, a power efficiency. That is the way where we are supporting uh, sustainability and the responsible tourism for participants in the tourism uh, sector. Uh, DG has taken the issue around the, um, uh, uh, the database and, and, and transparency. I also want to add that uh, in terms of um, easing um, the, the requirements for uh, uh, incentivizing or making available access to uh, uh, participants in the tourism uh, 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 industry or sector, we have, um, um, although this will be related to the, the 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 relief fund and and taking into consideration that this is not a relief fund but in terms of the method in terms of which we have been able to support tour guides this is one instance where we didn't um, a, 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 a call for applications but to working together with provincial tourist guides we have set a trend where we were able to receive um, a particulars of tourist guides and begin to dispense of the much needed fund. I'm just showing an indication that there are instances where the department will go all out and ensure that we we deal with the with the red tapes as and when a situation uh, 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 demands. 
in the department, there was a question that was asked in terms of what we are doing to ensure that uh, the, the qualification criteria or the requirements uh, will be will, will be met. Uh, so far, we are running uh, quite a number of projects that will increase the literacy of our SMMEs, that will increase their um, ability to come up with business profiles, that will increase the skills and, and, and make sure that they are able to be directed in terms of um, uh, access to, to, to funds that are available even also outside the, 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 the department of, 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 of tourism. And for that purpose, we also have got an agreement with CEDA wherein we are partnering in terms of increasing um, accessibility of uh, skills, the much needed experience and also uh, funding by um, uh, business uh, businesses within within the the, the, the tourism uh, uh, scales. Um, and Sifa will uh, address much on in terms of the 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 the, 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 the criteria perhaps that um, uh, we have agreed on. Uh, but uh, just to, to 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 mention that there are um, uh, uh, certain laws that will require uh, certain uh, instruments to be provided, like your 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 tax certificates, like your your um, um, uh, other other requirements, your your RICA, your RICA instruments uh, that will be a requirement in terms of the of the law. In terms of the allocation for youth, uh, people with disability, and rural um, uh, 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 businesses that will be among the peri urban and, and rural, that is reflected very clearly in terms of the allocation of the, the, the fund where it will go. We have 30% for uh, people with disability, uh, women 40%, and those businesses that will be centered around the peri urban and rural, we do have a uh, 40%. With the youth, there are programs that are being run in terms of um, a, a, a youth, youth development and a, a, a attracting youth to, to participate in the, in, in, in the tourism sector. We are currently uh, running a, a, a technology innovation hub together with TIA in terms of uh, stimulating our youth to come with a, a, a technological a solution to, to increase a contribution of our sector into, into, into the economy. That is besides all other uh, programs that we are running that are heavily leaning in terms of making sure that our youth have got the necessary skills and capacity to be able to, to participate. But yes, the tourism equity fund does um, uh, 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 lean also towards the youth in terms of the set aside allocation that is earmarked for for, 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 for the youth. Um, uh, uh, th thank you so much also for the question regarding uh, accessibility to, 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 to land. We've got a program in the department where we are partnering with um, uh, municipalities. Uh, there's a learning uh, a network. The Tourism Equity Fund will feature heavily in terms of our collaboration or intergovernmental uh, relations with municipalities and provinces in terms of uh, making sure that um, all that the, 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 the government wide, the three spheres of government um, responsibilities are really articulated. I, I, I really appreciate the, the issue that was raised against uh, around the, the availability, availability of land uh, in our um, a quest or the, the responsibility of the department to support uh, either through non-financial uh, support, the issue of of land will be will be will be taken up. And um, as Sifa's presentation has already alluded in in, in uh, uh, just now, our um, our role as as a department doesn't end up only um, in terms of uh, the the funding that we have made available. We, we have a responsibility to ensure that we support businesses in terms of them being able to comply. And for that, we've got a, 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 an ESD, Enterprise 
support development a program that um, has got incubators within itself, but also uh, identifying opportunities around other portfolios where we can be able to support uh, um, uh, 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 people that are already in the sector participating and those that will want to come in and, 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 and participate. And we, we afford various various skills and directions in terms of where to get the extra um, uh, uh, support that is needed for them to be able to participate. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Thanks, DG Minister, honorable members. I wanted to say that maybe before before Sifa comes in, there was a specific question from Honorable Klejo regarding what mechanisms do we have in place for dispute resolution uh, in the event that something does not go right. Um, we 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 are confident that uh, we 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 the beginning of uh, the relationship uh, that we have started with CIFA symbolizes uh, what is to come. Um, and we foresee that we will have a very good working relationship uh, with, with CIFA. Um, however, uh, I, I need to, to mention that uh, we, we do have a, a, a written agreement and it does provide for dispute resolution. But of course, within government, as all of us are organs of state, we prefer that uh, first and foremost, we should go the route of intergovernmental relations uh, uh, framework act, which which allows for us to really try and solve matters uh, before we could even uh, evoke all sorts of other approaches in that regard. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Tarage, our DG, uh, Sifa. I will now invite. Uh, the chairperson of CIFA to respond to their part of the presentation. Uh, no, thank, Mr. No, th thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I, it's, it's a number of questions and comments. I'll try and move as fast as possible for, for the sake of saving time. We, I think the, the, just to, to deal with the issue of disability as was raised um, by, by a number of commenters and form of question. We, I think uh, the, the chairperson of, of uh, the Portfolio Committee on Small Business sort of spoke for us. Uh, in a way, when we spoke about the numbers that we showed there, we were looking at the spend. We were trying to project you the spend that we're targeting in terms of those designated development impact, uh, developmental impacts. It was not in any way suggesting that we'd have excluded disabled people. So, so we, we note that with the seriousness that it deserves, you have to be non-South African not to take cognizance of that critical element. So, so we really appreciate the, 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 the reminder. For us, I think the key issue is, 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 and perhaps I should state it up front, we are designated, we have a responsibility to, to discharge on this fund. We do not claim, uh, we do not claim by any means that we will be 100% foolproof. We do our best to achieve that which we can achieve. We believe that in what we do, we should be guided and supported by all players, including yourselves, as the people that uh, play an oversight role uh, on programs that have to do with the state. The other point that I would want to pick up that is very critical, uh, because I sense that the, there's a misunderstanding uh, in terms of what we say. We, if you look at the points that uh, perhaps I, I should just, there's a, there's a there's slide on funding requirements. Let me just go back to it. If, if, whether if it can be flighted, you can look at your notes. It does not need to be flighted. Where we speak about the, 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 the latest financial statements and we refer, if you look at the, that point, which is point G on the funding requirements slide, we say we're applicable at the end. On five-year cash flow projections, we say we're applicable. On relevant industry certification, we say where applicable. On facility statements of other funders, we say where applicable. So, so please let's know that. But let me just also get into it to understand it, to, to explain exactly what we mean. We, we have to be mindful of the fact that we are dealing with state funds and therefore have to make sure that we, we definitely 
bring in all sorts of, of, of measures to ensure that we, we are prudent in, uh, in, in committing or spending on those funds. The 12 months that we spoke to, as it says, were applicable. It is for the purposes of us to understand. And we say we're applicable because there won't be 12 months unless if it's an enterprise that has been in existence. So we're referring to applicants, applications from enterprises that would have been in existence. In existence might mean that a, a black company is going out to acquire a company that has been in existence. So even if that player is a new entrant in the industry, it is important that we get to see the financial performance of that target enterprise that the black person is trying to acquire. We do that mindful, let me emphasize again, of the fact that we are going through a pandemic or we've been going through a pandemic since March last year, and therefore the tourism industry has suffered. So as I said, perhaps others would have missed it when we did the presentation. We are not going to use this as a measure to, to, to be punitive towards the, the, the applicants. It is meant for us to understand the historical performance of organization in line with our responsibility that we be prudent. So there may be cases, remember, as we said, and I think even the minister, a number of us uh, did uh, raise this point. This is not meant to be a fund that must be anchored on the principle of it being a grant. It must be anchored on the principle of us funding enterprises that are sound to be funded but also enterprises that have the potential to be funded based on the team that is there, the potential that is there as supported by the feasibility study and the plan that is there to buy those that are proposing to be funded uh, to show that they can be responsible with the funds, they can demonstrate that they will grow that enterprise or they'll be able to repay the money that has been, that has been uh, borrowed to them. So, so we, we put these measures ordinarily as a way for us to make sure that we're able to measure uh, to separate apples and peers, if you want to put it to, uh, to, to borrow uh, a saying. But the other point that we should raise, the, the five years, and I, I thought I'd try to explain, when we talk, the five years is not five years of a company having been in existence. We're saying we want to see cash flow projections for that company. In other words, we want to see how your cash flows will be flowing from the time that we lend you the money to, to the point uh, over the next five years taking into consideration, therefore, that even if we were to give you money in the next two months, you are still going to go through a couple of months where there'll be difficulty. After the 12 months of difficulty, we anticipate that the sector would have, uh, would, would, I mean, the, the economy would be reviving, the sector would also be, 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 be recovering. And therefore, we want to see what are your plans in terms of how you, you manage to, to manage, to, you, you want to manage the flow of funds as you rebuild uh, or you build this new enterprise. So in no way, uh, no way in our, in our presentation are we suggesting, honorable members, that we want to fund only people that are there. We say we'll fund new, we'll fund old, we'll fund those that are new entrants, we'll fund those that want to expand on existing enterprises. The key issue that we emphasized was that because of the nature of this fund, what it intends to achieve, we want, we've set a minimum criteria that if you are applying to be funded, you must at least be applying for a month, an amount that is 10 million and above. That is the only thing that we could say could be a hindrance. But if you listened again to, to what I was saying, I said, even if there's a 10 million minimum that we are going to accept as an application, it does not mean that there are no other funds. Yes, they are limited elsewhere where these people can be supported. Uh, there they, they are existing uh, programs within the Department of Tourism, even within CIFA itself. If somebody comes with a strong plan to be funded on a 5 million rand project, and we can see that it's really viable, and it, it's in the tourism sector, we'll fund it. Uh, so, so that's what it is. So the key issue is what the, 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 the program wants to achieve. That, that's the point that I thought I should emphasize much more clearly. I hope I've been clear enough on that front. Uh, I don't know. I, I picked up uh, differences in pronunciations. I'm very sensitive to pronouncing people's surnames uh, wrongly. Uh, I thought it was the Honorable Winkler. I, I had uh, another uh, Honorable member say Honorable Winkler. So I will stick with Winkler for, for my ease of interpretation. I thought that is the right one. So if I'm not Honorable Winkler or Winkler would correct me. 
We've noted a point of us uh, looking at environmentally friendly projects. Uh, I think it's a good point. Like I said, we're open to be guided. It's, it's a good point for us to note. Remember, this is a pilot project. So as we implement, we will be mindful of any input that helps us to shape it up for the better as we consolidate going forward. Let me just deal with a second. I don't know that's the, the I, I agree that is not a point for discussion. We agree, uh, the, the only an insane person would not agree that if you are dealing with state funds, especially with the, the this negative sentiment that is in the country, that we have to be extraordinarily careful and we have to make sure that we do all in our powers to make sure that we manage this thing in a manner that is as corruption free as possible and that we mitigate against any risk of possible corruption uh, that, can, that can pop up. We agree wholly on the issue of transparency, uh, that whatever we do, we should report uh, publish those that are successful, uh, and that we should track as we as we run through the the, the applications, the, the performance in, in in that regard. The 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 so we will publish all approvals, and I I'm I'm, I'm glad that the, the the department has also endorsed that position. We've done it before, all of us. So so, but I think I should also emphasize in this country, it is important that we. Um, uh, even in the midst of this negativity, pick up on the positivity. Uh, there would have been all sorts of allegations thrown at everybody elsewhere, but there are many people in this regard that that hold ethical standards in as high manner as possible. And I'm quite uh, 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 confident to, to reassure you, honorable members, that as far as CIFA is concerned, that's what we want to do. Uh, you may not have been mindful, uh, but noticed, you may not have noticed, even on the COVID programs, we are one of the few players that uh, from the state side were given a clean bill of health in as far as the implementation of the COVID relief program is concerned. We were not pointed at any challenge in as far as uh, malfeasance or corruption is concerned in as far as uh, the rollout, one of the biggest pressures that we've ever faced as CIFA. We've never processed so many applications within such a so short period of time and still be able to get out on the other end uh, being given a clean bill of health, corruption free in as far as the, the, the work that we have done. So we reassure you once more that the funds are in good hands. And if there's any instance where there's any suspicion of anything being wrong, please alert us and we'll, we assure you now that we'll act very decisively to intervene in, the, on that, on the, in that regard. So support for youth, uh, we agree uh, that, uh, Honorable Winkler, that is not only about money, it's also about uh, supporting in all sense. We know that money can be a very exciting and it can be able, get people to do the right thing. What we do at CIFA ordinarily when we approve uh, funding for people, we don't, if we approve you for 10 million, just write off a check and transfer it to you. In the case of an acquisition, surely there might be differences in terms of how we move the tranches. But for instance, in the case of an expansion, we will support the rollout of that program timed with a sequencing of the, the capital outlay that is required on that venture. So, and we make sure that if we, we, if we dispense uh, tranche one of your money, by the time you get your second tranche, we want you to account on what we should have covered you for. That's what we do. So it's not a free for all blank check that you get. We do that with a very tight uh, uh, approach and we put all measures. We've got all governance uh, processes in place from internal audit and so on to support us in as far as uh, tracking any possible malfeasance is concerned. So we commit, we'll publish uh, once the window closes. Let's, let us be mindful, and perhaps we should put it up front there to the public and also sensitize the, the, the honorable members. The reality is that this money is not a lot. It sounds like a lot when you're saying 1.2 billion, but the reality is not a lot. And in a case of a country where people are so desperate for funding and everybody believing that when they put a presentation and business plan, therefore they must be funded. It will be important that the information flows very freely to you but we should be mindful of the fact we're going to get a lot of criticism. The first thing that you're going to get on radio stations and press uh, and print press and all that is that the 1.2 billion rand money has been spent and it has been spent very unfairly and there's been so many institutions. But the reality is that we don't have 100 billion to fund the deficit that is there in order for us to cover that which has to be covered. So we'll do our best and perhaps in that also respond to the point that was raised by Honorable Jacobs. We agree that we should spread, spread the money as, as, as much as possible. Uh, it's a fine balance between making a dent on transformation, but also 
making sure that we 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 spread and for us spread means geographically but also spread in terms of players one thing that we do not reflect in the in the in the application in the presentation uh, which we take for granted because we've been working with for some time is that you are not going to see one applicant that gets approved on one and get and gets approved on the other uh, so we are not going to get somebody to double dip if you come in, you come in, and if you qualify, we'll give you an approval for that funding once. You are not going to jump on another one and get funded. So, so we, we, we are not there to, 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 to fund bodies. We are there to fund people that deserve to, to be funded. So on popularizing the program, there are many uh, uh, initiatives. I should say up front, uh, the, the honorable members from Small Business know we agree up front the CIFA that our visibility in the market is leaves much to be desired. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done to improve uh, the brand positioning of CIFA, to improve visibility of CIFA. It's work in progress uh, that we're working on uh, in terms of popularizing our programs. This one we've agreed, there's a dedicated uh, funding that has been provided by, by, by the Minister of Tourism when we started off. We're looking at all manners of ways that we can do, whether we look at using radio, through interviews and other programs uh, uh, or infographics, we, we're doing our best to, 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 to work on something that would assist. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, we're confident that we should be able to provide the necessary support, including using the networks of uh, co-locations that I spoke about. We will have to improve much more uh, and perhaps put more effort uh, at your at your advice, uh, Honourable uh, Siwen, on the, the issue of working, especially with the municipalities, because they are the first point of contact, of course. And if we've empowered them with information, they would help us to 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 help popularize and facilitate access to to the fund to the application process for people within their jurisdictions. So dispute resolution, I think uh, the DGs are addressed that. Uh, but I think it's also important to indicate, I think for as long as we have an attitude as players within the, the, uh, the, the architecture of the state as a whole, that ours is to work in collaboration and in a cohesive manner, we should be able to move far. So we, we don't even think of a dispute. We, there might be glitches, glitches that we'll address, but the key point for us to emphasize is how do we partner? How do we, do we support each other where we fall short? How do we jack up where we feel that the other is not necessarily rising up to the occasion? That is a key thing. And it would be good to see many other players that maybe we have not even fathomed uh, at this stage if they were to join us and assist us in taking the process much more further. Probably on the, the, the market access side, there may be other players that may be sitting out there and thinking we have a role. We'll be open to, to engage with those people and see our best. Can we see assist the applicants to survive, uh, to, 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 I mean, to, to make good progress on, on, the, on the on, on the scheme, uh, Honourable Kruger, we, we we note the point on 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 on, on red tape. We we agree that there have been people that would have been dissatisfied before without the process that have been run. One of the things that happened on an at, at an agency like CIFA, institutions like ours, have over the years automized uh, their their processes. CIFA is does not have an automized process as yet, and. An optimization process would actually deal with the initial elements of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, the application process, such that when a person loads, especially particularly an online application, you you run through some of the processes as through an automated process, so that when you have done that, uh, it then relieves the burden on those that that process the applications, such that they can process the application within a reasonable turnaround time and people get to get answers. But let us also be mindful, not all applications are, are, are ready to be processed. The people can come to you as parliamentarians and make all sorts of allegations. But you'd find that when a person actually submits an application, there are omissions that they make uh, that may not be picked up and it may make time because of the agility restrictions that is there, that are there within our institutions to be able to support those projects. But we agree as a mental principle, we should be as fast as possible. We should be as efficient as we may desire to be, to make sure that we help our people. But let us be mindful is volume plus pressure, but they need, and they need to be prudent. Uh, that may or may not result in, in, in delays. So we can't be careless with state money, as I said. Uh, the volumes put pressure on us, but we try our best to make sure that we process uh, these applications. Remember, this comes on top of the normal business that we run as CIFA, so we balance everything at once. 
why should we give priority to this one? Because we know uh, the agency at which we're supposed to move. Um, the, the, I think the other points that we raised, uh, so, so yeah, I think Honorable Jacobs had raised the, the, the issue of disability that's have done. We thank you once more for, for the words of encouragement and the support that you're providing. We, we really appreciate that. It helps when you know, especially when we're under pressure, that there are people out there that are willing to give you support at all times. Uh, when you need uh, uh, just that pet on the back for us to move forward, to move forward, to move forward. We agree we have to be developmental. The issues around, in fact, we spent some time when we're still coining the, the, the program. The Honorable Minister raised uh, very critical points around heritage. We, we agree that tourism in South Africa has its own unique character because of the history that we come from. We hope, unfortunately, we can induce the applications. We hope that in the applications that we receive, we'll find some that have a heritage character and we'll be very excited to, to process that. We understand that the township economy, 100%, we agree. Yeah, those are key develop, uh, development and impact indicators that we have to respond to. Honorable Gumbi asked the question around uh, 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 the number of jobs. Uh, I think they just uh, with due respect, Honorable Gumbi, I didn't see the screen moving. Perhaps you, you, you missed some of the information, but we understand that you may be forgiven. It's not a problem. But anyway, the, the, the number of jobs that, that we intend to create is 5,016 uh, is there in the indicators. That's what we, is what we anticipated. It might well be that we, sometimes when we put those numbers, we, we put them with some level of, uh, of caution. It might well be that we'll be able to, to beat those numbers. But unfortunately, we can't foretell what the applications look like. We understand tourism to be a, um, what do you call it, um, a, a, a labor absorptive, absorptive sector. So it, we, we believe that it is a fairly reasonable number to put out there that we can be able to, to, to create uh, 5,016 jobs. It might well be possible that we, 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 we exceed those numbers. And never ever imagine of any crooked connections who we, we will publicize. There, there is, there's no agenda for crooked connections in CIFA. We don't talk that language. We process an application as and when it comes. Surely in South Africa, perception can be anything that may be real to unreal. We know that will be criticized for all sorts of mannerisms uh, that people choose to do at their convenience with whatever intentions. But the reality is that if an application comes and it is strong enough, it deserves to be funded. It's a South African that person meet the criteria that we've set and they demonstrate an ability that they can run that enterprise, we will provide the funding. They are citizens, they need that money and they can create jobs like any other person can create jobs. We will do that. So we are mindful that there's negative perception, but I think we should also as countrymen, as patriots and citizens of this country, gradually begin to spread that message that says there are people out there that want to do that which is positive and it's when we emphasize the positive messaging in the country that we, we begin to get people to be confident in us as a country and we stop the bickering between us. Even in this state of low, low, percent, low, low confidence and negative perception, it's when we build on that, on that number of people that positive and positive stories that we can begin to have a snowball effect and create a better society. So it's important, I think it's high time that we begin to spread that positive. And we're talking about the recovery of the economy. It can't recover with negative sentiment. Let us believe in ourselves. It's very critical that we do so. Uh, so, 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 so under Honorable Matule Elwa raised a point about uh, 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 the vulnerable. L let me just emphasize, it connects with the point around uh, 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 the point that I raised right at the beginning. Let us not create a, an impression to people out there that what we're trying to run is a, is a program that is anchored on grants. You know, It must be a program that is sustainable. You know, Vulnerable may not necessarily, it won't in any way in the context of this program, talk to potential and sustainability. Those are two separate words. So vulnerable, it means basically you're talking about a rescue uh, case, which probably does not fit into the profile of what you're talking about. Sustainable, potential, positive indicators, that's what we're supposed to be finding. So, so yes, without necessarily excluding anybody, uh, making sure that we fund those that deserve to be funded. Thanks, Chair. Hey. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, 
Honorable members, I will now invite, uh, I see Honorable Muteka uh, and Honorable Suena. Mr. Poltina, can you assist me? Do we have any other hands that are raised? Um, uh, the other one, <clears throat> no, the other one, Shay, that I see, it's um, it's uh, Honorable Winkler. Uh, I think we, 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 we you took it before. I'm sure it could be a follow up or something like that, but those are the three hands that are up now. Okay, thank you, uh, honorable members. I will invite honorable Mateka, who will be followed by honorable Suela, and then uh, lastly, it will be honorable Winkler. Only those three hands. Honorable Mateka, over to you. Thank you, Chairperson of the Day. And let me welcome the presentation from the department. And also, let me talk to the minister first, because many things have been said before. The promises have been made before. The summits have been held before. The economic endeavors has been done before, but Minister, we are, we are still here. We are still here. So we think and we hope yours will bring up positive results. Uh, we don't want to sound negative from the beginning. Bring it up and then let's, let's see what it's gonna, it's gonna bring. But Minister, how will we ensure that this intention, I mean, this in initiative of positive intentions is bring up results to the marginalized and neglected people in the rural areas, villages, townships, and the small towns. Going in line with the principle, principles set by the committee itself, our focus or our biasness should go to the villages, townships, and small, small towns. So looking at what has been presented here today, I don't see the requirements or the selection criteria favoring those who were set or targeted by the committee as the deserving group of our nation that deserve to be to, to, to be included in the economy. You know, we you spoke of inclusive economy. Inclusive economy needs one to do things that have never been done by others before. That things that will take you where you want to go, but you, you may become un unpopular. But those are the things that you must expect and you must, you, you must face them when they come. Transformation is a disruption of those who are in a comfort zone, those who are the beneficiaries of apartheid. Obvious, they will fight and then let them fight while the process of the transformation, the revolution is happening. Minister and, 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 and the DG, I think I want to challenge the, the requirements. The requirements are not favoring the new entrants, more especially from those areas we are, we are looking at. Villages, townships, and small towns. The, the requirements are completely kicking them out. So one is asking himself, how will this new initiative differ from those that failed to deliver before? 
let's let's look at the resolutions of 2017. For example, 51 percent for procurement budget must be biased to the black ownership. Did it happen? Answer is no. Answer is no. Why? Because the systems, the requirements, selection criteria was not strictly uh, and clear. So we cannot repeat what happened. All the slogans and summits that were done during the 27 years of, of nothing cannot be allowed to, 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 to come back again. Let's let's get it clear, uh, uh, Minister. Is is this a loan scheme, or is is a government initiative to fund those who are not equal to others, as we call it equity equity fund? Because I see C five brought in one hundred and twenty million and the rest is from the department. But there is, an, there is a loan scheme within it. Let's, let us, let, let's be clear. Is the government uh, studying a loan scheme or CIFA is bringing its own 120 million to run and own uh, the, the, the loan scheme while administering the the, the funding of the department. Uh, let's let's get that very clear, because uh, chairperson, what do we want to see when we talk of uh, villages, towns, and small towns? We want to see the residents of Radiboye village in the John Morolo at John Dalright in the Northern Cape. People of Stakes Sprite in Jokabi, people of Mangani at Skukuna in Limpopo. People of Hamailula in November region, people of the Nell Scale at Stianda, people of Mondo in Zululand, people of Katleong, disabled people, and people from other areas which has never tasted the benefits, the economic benefits of, 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 of the new uh, era. We want to see them benefiting from this funding. Because when you look looking at this thing, at the requirements, completely, they are, they, they, they are excluding these people. I will give you one one example. Twelve months statements, bank statement. When where, where is the new person who still have to learn about these things going to get the twelve month statements? I hear chairperson of CIFA is talking of sustainability and other things. Then it must bear in mind that majority of the neglected communities, they don't have that that, that, that potentiality is talking about. So, so, so the department has got the responsibility to go out there and make sure from those vulnerable areas, we, we also develop and fund people who, who are going to benefit out of this uh, uh, good initiative. As I've already said, the, the intentions are very good, are very nice and sweet, but the way to get there is very difficult. That the tips is what are on the requirements. So my proposal, uh, Chairperson, number one, the, the requirements must be redone. If this, it means for transformation. If this is for transformation, the requirements must be redone. Because if you're looking at the requirements and the requirements that you find at the bank for business for business uh, uh, loans, it's the same. It's the same. So government cannot be run like a private bank. The requirements at the bank and these ones are the same. So let's think of the people who had never have been turned up back by the banks. What about them? If the very same government is going to do the same. 
let us again put clear targets of from where which province which district and the villages we are going to get how many percent we are going to assist how many percent so that when we look at, at, at the results later we can be able to say the minister have promised that in the villages of uh, northwest so many percent will be will be sourced and will be assisted and 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 and, and be helped but but now 90 percent is done so then it will depends but if we're going to leave it like this i can tell you all those slogans and stories we had before is going to they are going to repeat themselves now so my my, my proposal is are those let's get let's get clear targets where and by when and also redo the those requirements if this is not a, a, a loan scheme if it's a loan scheme yes obviously the the the, the, the funder needs needs the returns and then and the funder if it's private is not it's not responsible for the for the communities and all that so but if it's our government the requirements are totally out and they are not including our people therefore are not for inclusive economy thank you very much thank you honorable Monteca, honorable Suela. Well, thank you, Chairperson. I think it's one issue. Uh, I forgot to emphasize that uh, since the minister has indicated to us, I think it's important to say that, that there are some differences with those who are trying to take the country to court. We are behind her. Let her go and fight those battles. But we are in support because this program seeks to transform the inequality which is there in our, our society. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Winkler, uh, Thank can you? you. Uh, yes, yes, continue, Honorable Winkler. Um, thank you also to the speakers for their responses. Um, I did appreciate the fact that the uh, concerns over clarity and transparency and um, openness were taken very seriously. I do think that um, besides a list that shows the successful recipients, we also need a list of applicants. And um, although the intentions may be very good, we know that often um, vested interests um, interfere with the uh, candidate selection. So in the interests of ensuring that there aren't any, I would say, challenges to how applicants were selected, perhaps we could also get a list that is open to scrutiny on all those who have applied and then all those who have received. Um, I think the last speaker also made a very good point about um, ensuring that if we're looking at transformation, it is going to be serious transformation um, that includes in the rural areas and really getting um, those communities to benefit from tourism initiatives and allowing them access into that economy. Um, and perhaps then including incentives um, in the qualifying criteria where you get higher points, for instance, if you come from a rural community, if you're um, disabled, if you're a young person, if your initiative is green, if it is climate resilient um, and it speaks to adaptation. So somehow building that in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Winkler. Uh, I will invite a uh, DG, Mr. Taragi, to take us through a responses of the two questions. Or so the questions. Those, I, think, I think it's fine. I can take them because they're more political issues, but I think I should be able to. Um, thank you very much, honorable members, for, for the questions, comments. Um, I think the issue around um, what Honorable Mudeka has raised is that we have committed as the department to be um, 
able to ensure inclusivity. And I think over time, since the advent of the sixth administration, Honorable Mudega, you bear testimony that we've not paid lip service to what we say. Firstly, if you look at in terms of we, how we are reworking our programs to ensure impact, um, as we account to the portfolio committee, we are able to give you indication of what we are doing and where. An example again would be the minister's um, domestic tourism activation together with the DM. If you look at the areas that we've prioritized have been township and rural communities. Where we've gone and promoted those facilities as part of promotion of domestic tourism. And you note from the results of the, that campaign, you would see that the results are evident. So what I want to re-emphasize, Honorable Mudeka, as we are committing with the Tourism Equity Fund, we'll come back, we'll do our level best to ensure that we implement it within the prescripts that we've set to meet the obligations that we've set to ensure that there's real transformation. But we've got to note, honorable members, this is just near 1.2 billion. It's not too much. The need in the tourism sector is huge. It's big. So this is just a tip of an iceberg. From our side, one of the things that we want to do, and that's why the chair of CIFA spoke about sustainability. One of the things that we want to do from the department together with our partners, especially from CIFA, and that's why we were so grateful for CIFA, because how they brought the mechanism and how they have structured this fund, it's ensuring sustainability because we will be able to fund more in the way that we were doing initially. It was just going to be the allocation of 180 and then it was it was gone even from the department point of view. But from how it's been structured, it gives us an opportunity to say, if we are funding 10 people as an example now, and as we go on, we'll be able to bring another 10. So it gives an opportunity to increase the numbers as we go, so that you just don't do a 10 people and then you are done. But you can do a 10 people as they do the repayment, we are able to bring another 10 on. Now, Honorable Mudek, how we are different to how banks are doing. When you go as an entrepreneur to banks and you say, I would want to purchase a BNB or I would want to build a BNB, what the banks will say to you is that, do you have surety? Do you have a guarantee? And all those things. And I think the chair of CIFA has spoken to the issues of financial statements and the issues because we want as well people to take responsibility. We can't just give money and then somebody takes it. I mean, we know there are history. Uh, there are lessons to be learned in this 25 years how other schemes did not make it because people will take money, go and buy a big BMW or go and buy a big house and then this business is not sustainable. We don't want that. We want people who are serious about the business, who are going to commit to running this business, who will follow their sleeps and appreciate that their government is supporting them. But what we are doing compared to the banks, we are saying because we understand that we don't have surety. We understand that the rate of pay repayment if you go to a bank will be difficult. We are coming as a caring government, assisting you to survive as an entrepreneur so that you can build into your business, you can start your business, and therefore the repayment will be lower and that's why we are providing a portion of it as a grant. From the beginning, as we conceived this honorable model, at the time we brought it even as per our APP, it is always going to be a portion of a grant and a portion of a loan. What is added advantage of partnering with CIFA as well is bringing off credit of banks. The reason why it's important, members, for the banks to come in is for the credit facility. As you come in, you would note that when we did the review of the credit guarantee scheme, you realize that majority of the people, especially black people, black businesses did not qualify because they did not have the relationship with the bank. So the banks did not know about these businesses. What we are doing with this one, we are introducing this beneficiaries 
into having access to a banking facility and building a relationship with the bank. What it will do tomorrow, this person who would have given, let's say, he buys a hotel, and then the hotel becomes so successful and they want to expand. They don't have to wait for government to open another TEF because they might not qualify. But it gives them an opportunity to be able to go to that bank that their partner that has a relationship to say, we want to expand, we are doing well. And it will be easy for them to access the expansion facilities because they have built a relationship with the bank. So that's how it's different. It's conceptualized very well and to assist and for sustainability, not only in terms of finances, the non-financial support, it speaks to what you are talking to Honorable Medeng, to say you have a, a person from the rural area who perhaps might find difficulty on money in terms of a business. The CIFA and CIDA partnership that is coming into with non-financial support provides that opportunity to mentor this person as an entrepreneur, as an entry to the tourism space, to be able to be mentored to have a successful business. So we are responding to those issues on Arabo that you are raising in terms of a real transformation to ensure that what we are doing speaks to all the engagements that we've had in the portfolio committee. But beyond that, what society and majority of the South Africans have been saying to this government. So in that context, that's what we are doing. There isn't, no, there isn't a need for us to review the facility now. Allow the facility in terms of the criteria that we've made to be implemented. And we commit to you to say, we will do lessons learned. As CIFA board chair has committed to say, and what we have an agreement with, is that they will provide us with quarterly reports. Quarterly reports that will encompass as part of our reporting to the portfolio committee. And this speaks to what Honorable Mittler as well was talking about. Where will account in terms of the performance of the fund as we go quarterly, required by the legislation. So accountability, we should not create new things that are going to complicate the system. We have an accounting mechanism between the executive and the legislature. And within that framework, the accounting mechanism allows for parliament to play its oversight role and for the executive to report an account. Being a former chair of a portfolio committee, the team knows that I'm very particular about respecting the portfolio committee and ensuring that we can be able to account. So we'll provide the necessary reports to the portfolio committee, and we've got to be able to be clear, honorable members, the reports that we provide will comply, comply with the laws. So we'll not give you the reports that, for example, an individual will feel that we infringe their right to privacy. So some of the issues that we have to do is to ensure that we protect businesses because they are in a competitive space. They are operating in an environment where you know uh, business intelligence, that you can't disclose business secrets in particular manner. You know that, for example, you can't call a private company to come to parliament and say, give us your financial statements. It doesn't happen. They are not a public entity. So within the confines of what we are allowed to do, what we are able to do will provide all the necessary information as we account to the portfolio committee. Chairperson, I want to appreciate all members who have articulated, and I think across all parties, I've received, and as I'm sitting here, I do listen and I hear the message that it is necessary. We need to implement tourism equity fund. There will be bottlenecks. They are the following based on our experience as honorable members that we've been able to pick up, whether it's the red tape issues, it's issues of ensuring that we simplify the process. And one of the issues that I'm comfortable with feedback from the portfolio committee when we did a tourism relief fund was the issue that we assume that everybody has access to internet and therefore they're going to up, up, uh, upload on the internet. With this fund, with the presence of CIFA in provinces, it allows us an opportunity to be more accessible even to the remote and rural areas. And these are the lessons that we learned as we work together. These are the feedback that we've taken on board when honorable members reflected on our work and reflected on what we need to do. Honorable members, I need to assure you that this program we are committed to implementing. I think honorable Kaiko raised to say, Minister, 
what is it that we're going to do? Do you have plans in place? We've always been ready from the day one in terms of understanding based on the previous challenge of introduction of the tourism equity fund, the tourism relief fund, when we were supporting in the challenge of BE. We won the cases that were brought against us. We are actually even now have started preparing. We've been engaging the state law advisors, though we are not yet in agreement currently, because we initially wanted in upfront to assemble a legal team that we, they can go with us through the process. Should we go into court? Because we do not want any court action to derail this project. So we'll do our level best, many uh, honorable members within the confines of the law to ensure that this is not derailed. But I can assure you, we are preparing ourselves, we're getting the right people who understand the BE and the need for it, who are expertise in this area. I have also, I must indicate, I've been overwhelmed by the support by South Africans immediately the day it was issued that AfriForum and Solidarity are likely to take us to court. A lot of legal minds were saying we are willing to come on board to support you because we believe that this is an, a just cost that you need to take. So many South Africans, there are those organizations that said to us, they will be friends to court, they will apply to join the application should it brought, be brought against us. And this, we are truly, truly humbled. We appreciate the support from all South Africans across the race. There are many of them who even said, Minister, we think it's a misunderstanding. There's an organization from Eastern Cape that said, we want to assist in communicating. Perhaps if it's said by us, many will understand what it means. Maybe because you are a black person, they think that you're just a black minister who's racist, who is looking after. And they said, we want to assist you, minister, from ourselves as white people who say, we understand the importance of this transformation. And I've said, my door is open for them. And those organizations who have reached out to want to engage, will continue to engage with them. Those who are saying, explain to us how this fund works. And as you explain, you realize that people really were confused. They had a wrong message than what this message is intended to. So with those words, Chairperson, Honorable Members, thank you very much. We can only become stronger with your support. Appreciate it. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Minister Kubane Gubane. At this point, uh, Honorable Members, allow me to, on behalf of the uh, Portfolio Committee on Tourism, uh, appreciate uh, our engagement with both the department and uh, the small uh, business development component, uh, CIFA, and then also extend our congratulation message to the newly appointed uh, DDG uh, in the tourism uh, department, uh, Miss Matima. Uh, uh, I don't want to pronounce the pronounce the, the surname incorrectly, so but I will say uh, she is going to be responsible, or she is responsible for the previously domestic tourism uh, program, which is now the tourism sector support. We we do congratulate you, uh, Madam, and we look forward to working with you. At this point in time, I will then afford uh, all other. Uh, honorable members who are not part of the Tourism Portfolio Committee to exit the meeting. We thank you very much. The tourism component would like to do their in-house or continue with their, um, with, their, with their agenda and look into items that uh, is only for the Tourism Portfolio Committee meeting. Thank you very much and good day uh, to you all. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, honorable members, minister, and uh, the Department of Tourism, DG, and uh, CIFA. Uh, as they are exiting, uh, honorable members, I will call upon our content advisor, uh, Dr. Kuzwayo, to take us through quickly uh, the analysis coming out of the sonar uh, uh, that was presented or delivered by the, by the president uh, last week, Thursday. 
Dr. Kuzwayo, can you come in to talk to uh, the analysis of the SONA, SONA uh, presentation as tabled by, by, by the president on the 11th last week, Thursday? Uh, good day, Chaperson. Uh, Sisanda will be taking the comments itself. Thank you. Okay, thanks. I can hear that Sisanda is taking through, but your sound was very weak. Uh, Miss Loni, Sisanda is our researcher uh, in the Portfolio Committee on Tourism. Miss Sisanda. Hi, hi, Chaperson. I'm available. I'm here. Can I yeah, can you request that Mr. Boldina just uh, share a screen of the presentation with us? Okay, thank you. And then can you also just increase your volume because I, 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 I feel that you, you, you are a bit far away from the mic. Uh, Mr. Poltina. Mr. Poltina, are you able to share with us the presentation? And then can I request, uh, uh, Mr. Sander, as you are taking us, just take us up until uh, 20 past 12 so that we are cognizant of the time so that we can, in the last 10 minutes, be able to engage with the, with the analysis. No problem, Chief. Uh, in, yeah, in the interest of time, in the interest of time, while Jerry is not able to to, to fly to the presentation. Can you talk to the presentation? Okay, no problem. I'm hoping that all members have the presentation in front of them. I think Mr. Bolton, I did send it um, yesterday. Yes, perhaps. it was it was, it was was sent through. We will read from our notes that we have that was emailed to us. You can speak to it. Okay, and then the sound issue, am I audible? Yes, you are very audible now. Okay, that's great. Okay, uh, good afternoon, members. Uh, thank you for your time. I will try to get through this as quickly as possible. However, in the event that I do go through it very quickly, you're welcome to stop me so that I make sense, basically, of what I am presenting. As the chair has already indicated that the focus of this particular presentation is just primarily an analysis of some of the issues that were raised uh, during the SONA that actually relate to tourism. And let me just go through this. Uh, the first slide that we have there is basically just an outline of the issues that are raised within the presentation, which is the table of contents. I won't go through that in uh, view of time issues. And I'll immediately go through uh, slide number four, which focuses basically on the tourism statistics. Now, <laughs> basically everything we're saying nowadays is in relation to COVID-19. As we see in that particular slide that our numbers uh, for the past two years were very, very good. Um, however, now with the, the impact of this particular pandemic, our numbers have drastically gone down. If you're looking at 2019, for instance, we're looking at how tourist arrivals worldwide actually grew by 4%, reaching about 1.5 billion international tourist arrivals across the world. In the same year, South Africa uh, welcomed about 10.2 million tourists translating to about 81.9 billion in terms of uh, total foreign direct spend, which is quite significant. And uh, good numbers were also witnessed in 2018 in terms of about 1.5 million jobs that were created by the sector, both direct and indirect. And we're looking at about 8.6% uh, contribution to the country's GDP. And these numbers basically make South Africa one of the largest tourist uh, or tourism rather economies in, in Africa. If we look at the following slide, which is slide number five, um, with the, the outbreak of the coronavirus, uh, a lot of countries or governments across the world have shifted their focus from international uh, tourism to rather domestic tourism. And as we all know that domestic tourism has always been the stepchild, if we can call it that, uh, with regard to the tourism industry. And now the focus has moved from international tourism due to the the effects of COVID-19 and a lot more countries are starting to look at how 
they can actually invest more within the domestic tourism market and essentially seeing it as a driver of recovery for the tourism sector across the world. And this can actually also be evidence, an example that shows the value of this particular market to South Africa as well, are numbers from April 2019 uh, to February 2020. We had about 28.2 million overnight domestic trips that were taken. This is a significant growth from the previous year at 63%. Um, and we also saw at least uh, people spending about three nights at destinations and that results or totals to about 86.7 million bed nights, uh, which is more than was recorded in the, in the previous year. So in itself, basically what that tells us as a committee and also as a country is the fact that this is quite a significant market for, for tourism in South Africa. There's a lot of potential there. And that the, the committee in terms of its bias towards VTSDs or what we call villages, townships and small dor uh, dorbies is not a miss in seeking that more funding and more marketing activities be directed towards these particular products because opportunity is there, potential is there, and a lot more can be derived from this particular, uh, particular market focus. And the next slide um, also provides us with an outline of the changes in numbers when it comes to domestic tourism performance. Uh, these numbers are actually available from South African Tourism uh, dashboard. So, which is available to members as well if they're interested to look at these numbers more. So we see what we're seeing there basically is a decrease in numbers in terms of 2020 and 2019. So in 2019, we re recorded about 28 million uh, total domestic trips. However, this number has decreased drastically. In 2020, it went down to about 9 million uh, dom total domestic um, trips that were taken by locals in that regard. Obviously that affected spend as well, which led to a decrease in that. So what that tells us overall is that uh, we need to close this uh, particular, these numbers need to be closely monitored, especially if we're looking at domestic tourism as a driver in terms of recovery of the sector. Okay, and then the next one is on the, on the tourism budget. In this case, and this uh, slide number eight, and this is specifically the Tourism Equity Fund, I won't spend much time on this, especially in view of the fact that uh, the department and CIFA have done quite a, a tremendous job in headlining what this fund entails, how it will be basically managed and how they seek to see it reaching as far beyond just merely your urban areas. Um, I think what one can actually just raise here and something that's very important and will continue to be a problem, obviously with time, it might get better, is the fact that ensuring that this fund is, it reaches the, the targeted numbers. And this is said in view of what happened last year with regard to, we also, the, the department also has a, a tourism transformation fund that it has introduced and it has been running for a number of years. And however, what we've seen there is that in terms of distributing funds, the numbers there have not necessarily been so good. For instance, in 2019, out of 40 million that was allocated towards that fund, only 2 million was actually distributed within that financial year. So that is a significantly low number compared to what was envisaged. So the hope is that the same will not be um, What's the word? The same will not be, it won't be the same basically with the Tourism Equity Fund that money remains within the kitty when it was allocated for a, a greater reach than what it achieved within a particular financial year. Then the next slide is slide number nine, which looks at the UIF scheme, which has been extended, which is welcomed by the sector. However, the president did mention that the sectors that will benefit from this extension are still to be announced in the hope that the tourism sector, which has been uh, adversely affected by COVID-19 is one of the sectors that will be included in that regard. So the sector, I mean, the, the scheme rather, sorry, has been quite a, a temporary relief to a lot of uh, workers within the tourism industry. However, the advent of the second wave did have uh, an impact also on, on tourism especially with regard to a lot of attraction sites that were closed down during one of the most busiest uh, periods of, of, of tourism. And then predictions that we're also looking at in terms of a, a third wave. 
a lot of headlines have been coming up with regard to that. And those predictions are basically premised on global trends. So this basically for us as a sector indicates a rocky road ahead for this particular year. And the hope is that uh, schemes like these will be extended beyond uh, March 2021. And then the next slide is slide 11, which basically speaks to the rollout of e-visas. This is something that the sector welcomes, obviously, especially as it has been, for lack of a better way of saying it, a thorn on our side for a number of years. Um, the one problem here is that we've seen is that South Africa, in terms of its openness as a country, is, ranks quite low on the Africa Visa Openness Index. Currently, or rather in 2019, it ranked at 34 out of 54 countries. So that basically means we're not necessarily as open as we would like to be compared to the rest of Africa. And that obviously means that it takes away from how much we can benefit from markets that are willing or rather want to come to the country. So the rollout of e-visas from these countries that have been mentioned by the Department of Home Affairs are welcomed. However, it will be prudent for the committee also to make sure that there's clarity when it comes to timelines in terms of um, when this will actually happen in view of the current market and also at the same time ensuring that there's capacity within the different offices that will be serving uh, these travelers into the country to ensure that people's applications are processed as efficiently as, as possible. And another issue to highlight here is with regard to the to marketing and uh, optimizing this opportunity of markets coming into the country, ensuring that our marketing efforts actually are biased towards our villages, uh, townships, et cetera. Because in the past, as we've seen, and we continue to see that this is continuously skewed, our marketing efforts are continuously skewed towards our uh, major cities and, and towns. And then the next slide is slide 13, which speaks to the, the district development model. As much as this was not necessarily um, focused on per se with regard to tourism in the, in the SONA speech, However, it is a current focus of government and the way forward. And it has obviously a number of impacts for tourism development at local government level. The committee met with COCTA on the 24th of November last year to engage on how this model basically will effectively benefit tourism overall. As we all know, the, the, the challenges that the tourism industry has with local government in terms of service delivery, and a lack of conducive environment for business development and growth. So the, the, um, the key here is to basically just encourage the committee to continuously engage with COCTA, not only just COCTA, but also the Department of Tourism. Because if I remember correctly, in the APP, they did mention that they will be developing uh, tourism implementation plans that will be aligned to the district development model. So it is vital that the committee keeps track and monitors this to ensure how it will benefit businesses on the ground and communities at large, especially our community-based organizations and how they will be able to effectively use this to, to grow basically and ensure sustainability going ahead. And then the next one is creating a conducive environment for business. This is not a new issue. It's something that has been there and was actually mentioned in the 2019 SONA. And in this particular case, just to what, there are many issues around creating a conducive environment for development, specifically with regard to tourism. However, the one that is very important and continues to be important among many is the issue around uh, tour operator permits, which continues to be a thorn on our side as a sector and ensuring that these are dealt with uh, efficiently. And this continues to be a problem and obviously engagements are still ongoing, I'm sure with regard to this, but this is something that the, the committee needs to also monitor and ensure that it is resolved, especially in a time where a lot of businesses are closing down. We do not need more red tape or bureaucracy basically to service hindrances when people are just trying to survive day by day. And now the challenge with regard to this is also with regard to the electricity supply shortfall that has been predicted that in itself will continue to pose a challenge for both emerging as well as established businesses in the sector. And then the, the second last one is with regard to impact of climate change on the sector. And let's go to slide 17 for that. 
Uh, this also continues to pose a threat to the tourism industry sustainability. As we all know that tourism packages in the country are highly dependent on a number of uh, natural resources. And these are basically vulnerable to the impact of climate change, especially if we're looking at our villages, our townships and our small dwarfies as well around the country. I think the recent cyclone also showed us um, how vulnerable our areas or our destinations can be, or are rather with regard to mother nature or disasters in that regard. And I know that in 2011, the department published um, National Tourism and Climate Change Response Program and Action Plan. And I think this is something that the committee needs to pick up with the department in terms of going forward and ensuring that our destinations are crisis ready for events of this nature and whether there is what collaborations basically are in place between local governments, uh, your uh, department of the disaster management units, your uh, environmental department, etc., to ensure that when things of this nature ensure what systems kick in and ensuring that our tourism products are basically protected at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day. And then the last part, or second last part rather, of the presentation is with regard to the vaccination rollout program. As we all know that we are currently sitting with the term, media headlines, called the South African COVID variant, which has not necessarily been good for, uh, or rather created quite a very negative narrative for our country. And this is not good for obviously brand management issues around tourism. So this is something that Brand South Africa, as well as South African tourism, need to conduct a robust global PR, PR rather exercise to out counteract this particular negative um, narrative for the country. The focus should rather be more on the efficiencies and capabilities of our medical fraternity instead of using this particular term to, what do they call it? Some call it, is it Afrophobia? that we are evidencing that through the use of this as a South African COVID variant, which is not necessarily the case because it has been uh, diagnosed in other countries without some of those people actually having had traveled to South Africa. So this is something that really needs uh, attention from our side, especially Brand SA and South African tourism in that regard. And then the next one is with regard to the efficient rollout of the vaccination program, especially to ensure the perceptions about the country, to improve rather perceptions about the country's safety. And at the end of the day, also dealing with issues around the uh, international bans or travel bans that have been instituted against the country. Okay, I think my time is almost up. Those are just a, a few suggestions with regard to what the, the committee might need to focus on going forward and ensuring that in, that, in this time of COVID-19 or a new normal, the country is able to find pockets of growth and at the end of the day, recovery and maximizing on whatever else opportunities are there. And the last one that is also quite important is the last, um, last bullet point in that particular slide. And that is with regard to the pending changes with the re-evaluation of mandates for SOEs, as this has a specific impact on our own entity as a committee and that is South African tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time. And that is it from my side. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sandaloni. Honorable members, this is the analysis uh, as presented to us by our researcher, Ms. Loni, uh, which analyzes uh, aspects of relating to tourism that were raised in the sauna. Uh, I now invite honorable members to engage with the analysis. Uh, I do not see any hands. I will take it that uh, honorable members do accept the analysis as uh, presented to us. I see honorable uh, Sitole Ketamabal. You can take the platform. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, we must 
actually appreciate the, 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 the analysis from, from, from Mrs. Lonnie. But uh, I think, Chairperson, it would be unfair for us. I don't know if we can discuss this because it was just an analysis which we're supposed to, to live on it and, 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 and have the input from our side as a portfolio committee. I don't know if the time is, if the time is, because I see now the time is now half past, 25 past now, because we're supposed to finish at 12 o'clock. I don't know, Chairperson, I'm trying to check if you can do a, do us a favor that we can uh, discuss this uh, analysis next week. Yeah, the suggestion is taken. Uh, for now, I was just calling upon uh, for comments uh, so that uh, honorable members, uh, you do not just consume a presentation and you do not have anything to say. But uh, the suggestion from Honorable Ketamabada Stone is that we accept the analysis as presented to us, and then uh, we then go further to consume it uh, in our own space and time, and then we will engage uh, with the analysis in our next meeting, if time permits. Can I get a seconder for that proposal? Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, yes, I, 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 I welcome the presentation, Chairperson. Uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, and I support the move that we, 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 we then note it for discussion in our next meeting. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the suggestion and the proposal by Honorable Sutole has been seconded by Honorable uh, Pumeza. Uh, honorable members, that now comes to the conclusion of our portfolio committee meeting. Let me appreciate uh, your patience, even if uh, time was uh, overstretched to do committee business because that this item was uh, on, the, on the agenda. This shows your commitment as honorable members uh, to the portfolio committee to say, even if time is stretched, uh, you will uh, uh, bear with us uh, and uh, you allowed us to continue and taken up your lunch period. At this point in time, uh, honorable members, uh, the meeting is concluded and it's the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade uh, Chair. Malbongwe. Yeah, right, Jerry. Right, Jerry.